Oh, hey you. It's Kat and Steve with the Positively Midwest podcast. Well, hello there. Now, before this next episode, let's talk about sharing our mission. To help, we have hooked up with Anchor.fm to help us keep launching Positively Midwest to as many ears as possible. The more we expand our reach, the more lives we can help inspire. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. Bonus, it's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Well, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and yeah, many more. You can make money with no minimum listenership, which helps our cause. It's everything you need to make a podcast in just one place. So go now, download free Anchor app or go to anchorapp.fm to get started. Now, sit back and enjoy the next episode of the Positively Midwest Podcast. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Positively Midwest. My name is Steve Jurens, and across from me, as always, is my lovely wife, Catherine. Hello, Mr. Jurens, and hello, everybody out there. Well, first off, I just want to thank everybody for your continued support. It seems to be quite a time to continue to practice gratitude because we just keep growing and we keep evolving. And uh, just today, as we record this on Sunday, January 24th, we've even dropped some new merch and stuff. So we've got a lot of cool things going on uh, with Positively Midwest and great things coming on the horizon. So with that in mind, though, we have a podcast episode to record and we're going to talk with uh, Richard Bergen. He is a film director. And uh, he got hooked up with us by uh, a mutual friend, Steve Joyner. And uh, we're going to kind of dig into Richard and, and see uh, see what we can learn about positivity. Richard, do you want to say hi to all the listeners? Yeah, hi, uh, hi everybody who's listening. And Steve and Catherine, thank you for having me on your show. You are very welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, I think this is going to be pretty exciting. And, and hopefully we'll find... Uh, we always try to find a way we can pull some positivity out of something and uh, inspire people because we never know what uh, people are going through, you know. So, um, tell oh, us, yeah. tell us a little bit, Richard, about about yourself. Uh, you know where you, where you kind of grow grew up and a little about your childhood and what you do um, in the filmmaking industry. Well, I am also from the Midwest. I grew up in the suburbs of St. Louis. And now I live in Chicago. I lived with my mother in Florida for about a year and a half, but then I decided, you know what, I was I was meant to live up north. Yeah. So, so despite yeah, despite the uh, winters that we deal with up here, I decided it would be the best to move back to where you know I I knew people and everything. And. Last year, right before the pandemic started, I wrote and directed my first feature film, which is called Fang. And, you know, we, we were very lucky. We got to film it in January and February 2020. So a month after we finished filming, then everything shut down. So Oh, wow. So it was, just, it was, yeah, it was incredibly good timing for reasons I never could have imagined. <laughs> Yeah, you cut it real close there, but it just worked out how it was supposed to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very cool. So now um, when when Steve and I were talking before he, he set us up, he had mentioned that uh, you have a form of autism as well, which they thought would bring you challenges in life. Could you give us a little uh, background on some of that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, What I have is called high-functioning Asperger's and you know, if you look at autism, it's like what they call the autism spectrum. So at the very low-functioning end of the autism spectrum, you have people who are nonverbal people who are, you know, it's like they, they have trouble controlling body movements. There's kind of the image of the low-functioning autistic kind of like banging their head against the wall, and that's, that's at the very kind of low-functioning end of it. And then where I'm at is at the very high functioning end of it. So in, in many situations, I could pass as, you know, I think he's a pretty normal guy. I don't want to say all the way normal because 
that's not accurate. But in general, in most situations, I can act, you know, I can act normal, but then it's not something that comes naturally to me. I've had my whole life, I've had to study how other people interact socially and then kind of mimic their kind of movements and how, how people interact with each other. And so in a way, I think that kind of gives me, you know, kind of a background in acting without ever having acted professionally because, you know, I've had to kind of think normalcy my whole life and that, you know, having to act on that level from a young age definitely gives me a lot to work with in terms of directing actors in my movies. Wow. So really for you, um, you know, it, maybe does that seem like, a, you know, does that get to be really tiring for you uh, to, you know, to, to think that you have to, you know, act what we would consider, you know, in society normal, but, uh, you know, does that get to be difficult for you at times? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, you know, well, the thing about uh, Asperger's too is that, Generally, I process things in a very intense way, so I have like very dramatic mood swings. I'm either feeling really good, really down, really something at any given time, and, and definitely I can I can get tired. You know, I'm I'm an introvert. I, I like to have time alone to recharge after being with people, but I also find it very stimulating to be with people too. And I think as a filmmaker, when you're making movies that are kind of more dark and uh, unusual, that then, you know, what would seem kind of unsettling in a normal situation kind of becomes a strength when you're making horror. Yeah, that's a really interesting genre of movies, you know, to do, um, which I want to get into that too. Oh, it, thank you. Yeah, um, as far as your... Um, you know, with what we were talking about with how you, you know, get tired, you're kind of maybe even an extroverted introvert, uh, is, has they, is there medication out there that's available, you know, to help with, with any of that? Or, or do you utilize anything like that? Or is it just kind of something you, you work on yourself? Well, there is no medication for autism of any kind, but I do take plenty of different pills, but those are for other things. Mm hmm. OK. But uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think I, I haven't heard of any medication for autism specifically. No. Sure. Yeah. So is it kind of, uh, you know, what do you do to uh, to try to stay, you know, positive when you do feel kind of run down or uh, you have to get something done? I saw on a post on Facebook uh, that was written by you on your page and uh, thing, the movie page. And you said that you had worked uh, 15 hours straight setting up the production. Oh, yeah. You know, and... That brings back memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I just can't believe, you know, that you're, you're putting in those kind of hours, you know, and, and then for you to have to kind of, you know, put on this this personality in a sense, you know, that's got to be real tiring. Oh, yeah. Well, well, the thing is that one thing I've learned about myself is that it actually has you know, a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, sure, but, you know, for me, it is like being on, you know, set, making the movie. I mean, that's, that's a terrific high, you know. It's, it's like I can go hours, you know, working without eating, but because I'm in the zone, I'm focusing on something I'm really passionate about. You know, I don't really get worn down by that. But what feels more tiring for me is more kind of like every day stuff but I could focus very intensely on something that I'm really interested in which is one of the strengths of having Asperger's is what they call hyper focus which is being able to focus for a very long time on one particular thing mm -hmm. so what is something that you enjoy doing as a hobby or as something just to take time for yourself when you're feeling that run down 
or drained after you've had to exhaust some of your energy, what is something you enjoy that just kind of helps bring you that peace or that, you know, bringing you back to center? Well, for me, it really depends. Usually when I get in a very kind of down mood, then I kind of have to kind of think my way out of it, you know, before I can really move on. Or generally, like, the best thing for me is just kind of, like, distracting myself, you know, as long as I'm not, like, focusing on whatever is making me upset, and I can easily kind of get myself into a corner where I'm, I'm focusing very intensely on whatever is upsetting me, and then it's just like a, you know, a, a circle it keeps getting, circling around, it's getting worse, but... Generally, as soon as I start thinking about something else, as soon as I work my way out of it, then I start to feel better, and then I can kind of switch gears to a different subject. Yeah, we talk a lot about it's about our mindset, right? So it's like if you're allowing that negative to bring you down, so you are taking that and you've already trained yourself, which is what most of us are now working on is to rewrite our brains, not allow us to get bogged down with the negativity and to try to find our positives and our gratitudes and our things that uplift us. So that's awesome because that's what we are all about here at Positively Midwest. Oh, thank you. Well, I did that without even intending to. <laughs> it's definitely an everyday journey, isn't it, <laughs> to work on that? That's right, yeah. Yeah, and you know... Um, we like to do a lot of research and we like to even do things that, you know, engage people's thoughts and, and, and causes you to look at things differently. And, you know, even, uh, one thing that caught out to me that, you know, I just feel compelled to kind of, you know, talk to you about is, you know, you had said with, uh, you know, with your style of, um, of autism that you, you know, you've analyzed people on how they act normal and you throw out the word normal and, you know, it makes me think, um, real, you know, in some sense, you know, what really does that mean for a lot of people? You know, I think uh, people strive to try to find a normal or should I be like this person or this person? But, you know, everybody has got their own uh, thing that they're going through. So, um, oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, the way I, yeah, the way I look at it is, you know, it's normal and there's normal with more of an emphasis. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that, you know, that, that, yeah, everybody has, you know, their their strangeness and their peculiarities about them. But then there's also kind of like a baseline of social skills that you need in order to not alienate people. And that's what I'm striving for. You know, that's what I've always been striving for is to maintain that baseline of social skills so that's. Mm-hmm. When I say normal, that's more what I'm referring to in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of takes on a different meaning for you because, you know, you want to make sure, uh, you know, you're maybe not pushing people away or, uh, you know, frustrating Definitely. them or whatever. Sure. So, um, well, first off, I mean, I'm very proud of you for how far that you've probably had to come. And oh, for, thank you. Yeah, definitely. And putting yourself out in this kind of industry uh, where there's so much competition and, you know, there can be some judgmental people, there can be rude people. So, is, so. No, yeah, well, well, choosing to do this convinced me that I might actually be insane. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> so how did you get into this industry? How did you get into filmmaking? How did you get to make your debut now? Well, the way I got into it was at a certain point, and this was my freshman year at college. You know, I wasn't I wasn't studying film. I, I never went to film school or anything like that. But at a certain point, I just realized, you know, this is what I want to do, and I have to do it, or I'm never going to be satisfied if I don't try. And so I basically I just started doing it at increments. I. You know, I, I spent a lot of time uh, screenwriting. I, I made two short films before doing Fang, and I guess I've kind of worked my way up to the point where I can do it professionally, you know, and, and make money from it, which generally, generally takes a long time to make money 
from filmmaking. I've been doing it for five years now, and I'm on the verge of making money from it for the first time. So that gives you an idea. It's definitely like the hard work pays off. It's one of those things that you have to keep striving for. Can't give up when the first door gets shut in your face, maybe along these lines too, when it comes to filmmaking, you know, it's like you have to write the next script. If somebody didn't like the first one, you have to go to the next guy or write the next script and see, you know, what you can get picked Absolutely. up. Absolutely. So who Yeah, picked- I mean, well, well, yeah, well, like, you know, it's one of those things where it takes much longer to do than most people realize. If, you know, everybody has like their sights set on, you know, being the biggest, the most successful, being a superstar, but honestly, you know, I think, you know, you can have, like, a moderate level of success. Like, I've kind of I scaled down my ambition some from, you know, oh, I want to be seen as, you know, a genius by everybody and have this huge mansion and, you know, this big god and car and having all these beautiful women throwing themselves at me but now now I'm a little bit more modest I'm like you know as long as I can make enough money to support myself as long as I can make the kind of movies I want to make then then I'll be content yeah and don't don't let go of that dream because it sounds like you're well on your way so when oh, thank you <laughs> you bet yeah I'll, I'll try my best <laughs> <laughs> when does uh when is it projected that the movie comes out well, Fang will be finished probably in a little over a month, and as soon as it's done, I'm going to have an online premiere. I was originally going to have a theatrical premiere here in Chicago, but with the pandemic, you know, it's there aren't that many theaters that are still open, so mm-hmm. I decided you know, I'm just going to show it online once to everybody who's interested in the movie, and then after that, I'm going to get a distribution deal and it'll be distributed more widely, you know, through streaming DVD. And if we're lucky, then it'll get, it'll play in some theaters too. Wow. So you've still got quite a bit of work that, that you have to look forward to and you're still kind of, are you kind of finishing up like the the editing part? (laughs) Yeah. We're in the final stages of post-production now, but I, I have no experience like with the distribution yet yeah, although I've been in talks with several different distributors but it's still kind of like a new frontier for me oh sure yeah you've already started kind of talking to people about um, how you can do the distribution oh yeah yeah no I've been, yeah, I've been talking to mm-hmm. like different distributors but you know of course you know I, I want to see make sure I can get the best possible and have the widest reach for the movie before I make any final decisions on who will distribute it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wonder, you know, are do you will you have kind of a website for the movie itself too, or like a trailer that you can be releasing soon, something like that? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm working on uh, getting my website set up and. As soon as the footage of Fang is ready, then I'll, I'll get a trailer made. I'm definitely, I, I, I mean, I can't wait to see what everybody will think of it. You know, it's, you know, I, I get asked a lot of different questions for different people I know about when the movie's coming out, and it's like, believe me, I want it to come out more than anyone else. Oh, yeah. But, it's, yeah, but it's, it's one of those things that takes time, and, and it's, post-production has been going very well so far. I've been really impressed by how it's coming along and before you know it, the movie will be done and everybody will get to have the thing experience. I can't imagine. It's like once you start to see all of your little pieces of this film, how they, you know, shoot it in sections and now in post-production, watching it come together, like has to be like a dream come true going, oh man, I had this picture in my head of this movie with this guy you know, getting bit, and it's like turning into this reality before your very own eyes. That has to be such a rewarding feeling, knowing that it's like that paying that gratitude to it of how amazing this experience is that you've been given. No, no, absolutely. It's an amazing feeling, and that's how I can work on it for 15 hours straight because it's such a high 
while you're there doing it. And I remember the day, like our last day of filming, when we we finished the last shot. You know, that's just such an incredible feeling. I mean, I'm not. I generally don't get very uh, emotional in public, but I was I was actually kind of jumping up and down for joy there. You know, it's you know, it just an amazing feeling when you get it all done. Wow. Well, I was reading this um, synopsis from a uh, another podcast that you had done. Um, looks like it's called True Fiction Podcast. And uh, they made note that uh, Richard took some content for the film from his actual life with his father. Um, how does that kind of relate to, you know, a little bit of the passion that you put into the, the film? Well, it kind of starts with the premise of saying so saying in the story it's about a young man named Billy Cochran and he's a janitor who has autism so you know he's very kind of he's kind of isolated from the people around him and then one night Billy goes home he he, he wakes up in the middle of the night he has to use the bathroom and then he finds there's this rat in the bath in the bathtub and then the rat kind of jumps out and chases him around and then it bites him. And so from that point forward, Billy starts to feel like he is transforming into a rat himself. And the way that I came up with that premise is that I was living with my dad, you know, for a number of years. And my dad has had Parkinson's. And so it was, it was very sad watching him, you know, kind of, deteriorate after he got the disease and while things were kind of going downhill and our relationship was getting more dysfunctional you know where I start to see these pests in the house like I remember one time I was, I was using the bathroom and uh, I think it was either like a cockroach or like a silverfish crawled over my foot that there were other big bugs that I found in my room and I think we I think I remember there were a couple brown recluse spiders too. It's still kind of living in that environment for a number of years is that that was a big inspiration for saying I don't think we actually had any rats in the house, but I think the idea of having Billy transform into a rat came to me because, you know, if you think about a rat, you know, rats are often seen as pests or often seen as dangerous and carrying diseases. Mm-hmm. But rats are also, yeah, but, but rats are also misunderstood. You know, rats don't mean to hurt people. They, you know, if a rat bites you, it's because it's hungry or scared. They're not, it's not like they're going out of their way to, you know, hurt humans. And so it kind of, what kind of struck me on a subconscious level is that, you know, being a rat is really a good metaphor for being autistic because it's, you know, you're, it's like you end up hurting people without intending to, and you're kind of seen as being an outsider from humanity in a sense. That's a really interesting perspective oh thank you it's like and to you know kind of live through that that's like a what a lot of people you know can't ever imagine kind of living through and you did and instead of you know taking the negative road from going through kind of a you know troublesome time you used it for your benefit by letting it inspire you to create this film that's like the true definition thank you you're Oh yeah, no, you're you're exactly right. That's well, I think that you know, and this isn't such a positive way to look at it, but I think art is generally inspired by suffering. I think if you've never really suffered in an intense way, then I don't know what you would make a movie about. It would be hard to. <laughs> It'll be hard to make a movie where all the characters are happy like the whole time. That yeah. wouldn't be very, so yeah, that wouldn't be much of a story. So I think that, I think that that's really one of the healthiest ways to cope with having 
you know, very kind of troubled past is to draw from that and use it as inspiration for art, whatever kind of art you make, you know, it, it can all come from that pain. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's really... Uh, what we what we kind of talk about with people too is that you know we can't always control you know what happens to us but we can control how we react and that you know we have to you know you have to feel the feel too in a sense even though something negative has happened to you you can stay positive when we preach staying positive but we don't expect people to be positive all the time. You know, it just, it doesn't work that way. So you have to, oh, no. yeah, you, you have to sometimes go through the muck and go through some of the, the sadness or, or whatever unhappiness before you can, you know, start rising above and, and they're learning experiences, you know? Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I mean, I think if somebody, was never unhappy then they would be kind of oblivious because there are plenty of things even if they have a relatively good life there are plenty of things that that can be upsetting so I think that probably what I I, way I like to look at it is you know I like to look at it as being kind of honest but also kind of fair and maybe you know maybe don't be harder on yourself than you have to be Mm mm-hmm yeah, definitely. That's that's a very good lesson for, you know, a lot of people. And you can apply that in so many different, you know, contexts of your life, uh, whether it's, you know, work or, you know, your personal life, your relationships or your parenting with kids. You know, sometimes you just got to, you know, step back, take a breath, you know, let things roll out and and realize whether you believe in, in God or if you believe in some kind of universal spiritual connection, you know, everything Everything has a plan. It's got. It's working out for you. You know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely a big planner. I always. I always come up with some sort of plan, even if it seems like a very difficult situation. Yeah. So you. So now that you're kind of in the the stage, it seems where you're about to finish up the film and doing, you know, uh, some publicity on different things here and there too. Uh, I see here that you do have a Facebook page for, uh, the movie itself. So, um, what you've done is you've called it Fang the movie. Is that where they yeah, find that's it? Yeah, the, that's the name of the Facebook page. Yeah, I wanted to add the movie part in the title so people would be sure that, you know, this is what Fang is and that it's not, like, something else. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, because there are... Um, there's a couple of movies that are out there that are older that have Fang in the title. So we want to make sure that people realize when they listen to this and they go to, to find it and watch it, uh, when it does come out that it's Fang, the movie, and you can search yeah, it. This is the Fang, Richard Bergen's Fang. Yeah. Cause you can find that, um, pretty easy once you go to Google it, um, as well. So, um, but yeah, you've got a good following on that page already, and uh, see, so you've done a few, few other interviews on podcasts too. And um, so, when when it comes to horror, uh, you say that you are also working on something else. Is that also a, a horror movie? Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely. Well, it's not quite like horror in the conventional sense, but it definitely gets into some very kind of disturbing territory mm-hmm. which is and it's it's all part of the uh, process you know and I, I like to think of it as like you know an exorcism I'm kind of exercising my uh, inner demons and different things I've been through in the process like writing and directing and so my next uh, movie is called Broken Angels it's a thriller and the premise is that it's about this guy, he's a politician, and he's campaigning to be elected senator of Florida. And, you know, he's this very kind of suave, charismatic guy. Like, socially, he's kind of like the extreme opposite of autistic. He's very good at manipulating people. He's very good at getting people on his side. But 
he has a very dark secret, which is that in his double life, he is kind of this violent predator, this kind of very kind of twisted criminal guy. Mm-hmm. And then when the protagonist realizes this, they have to prove it to everybody else that people really like this guy and so they don't want to believe that he's really this, you know, horrible person, even though there's evidence, but, you know, they want to look the other way. And that's the most they can say about that without giving too much away. Wow. I am excited to watch these movies. Yeah, that sounds oh, really... Oh, thank you. Yeah, it sounds really thought out and, uh, well, you know, well, like a very good plot. Well, thank you, Steve and Catherine. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, with, with the plot generally, you know, because I've been working, I've worked on, you know, all of these stories have been kind of going around in my head for a long time, and so I keep coming up with new details to add to the plot to make it kind of, you know, thinking of like a new angle for the characters. You know, it's, it's very kind of, it's really kind of interesting when I'm writing that, you know, you could start with what seems like a pretty simple and straightforward story, but then when you kind of zero in on it and you're really intensely focused on the story and then you see all these new things in it each time you go back to it that you didn't think of before, it's really interesting. Yeah, it sounds like you've had to not only overcome a lot, but you've had to go through a lot to, you know, be able to take your vision and get people, you know, that are that are ready to support you and, and work with you and put this out there. And, you know, really, when you when you break it down, what an inspiration, because, you know, there's people that um, and, and we'll, I'll bring this back around, but there's people out there that think that they're you know, completely normal, and yet they can't accomplish, you know, I can't follow this dream, or I can't do this or that, and you're really just taking charge, and you learn how to overcome things, and and continue to move forward, and now your dreams are coming true, uh, right, you know, right in front of everybody's eyes, and and it's just absolutely amazing. Oh, well, I'm really, I'm really glad to feel that way, thank you so much, that, you know, it's, well, I was thinking that, you know, it's, you know, if anything, it's the fact that I'm not so normal that this probably helps me get to this point, you know, because at a certain point when I was younger, I realized, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be totally normal. You know, I'm never, I'm never just going to be like a regular guy, you know, who has like a regular job and everything. So, you know. I just have to do this, you know, what do I have to lose? That's my attitude. Well, it's very positive and, you know, it's very straightforward. And I think everyone can take a, you know, take a page out of your book, if you will, that uh, you're an inspiration to a lot of people. And when this comes out and uh, it's kicking butt all over the world, and it's a, a great movie, then you're going to get all those those compliments and affirmations back, and, and you'll really realize that, that you're in a place in life for that you should be, and then Broken Angels is going to come out, and that's going to kick a lot of butt too, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, and then I have, like, a, a lot of different, you know, ideas that I haven't even started writing yet. You know, I, I always come up with new ideas all the time just from, like looking at the world around me, there's something, there's usually something kind of strange happening, like in any given, you know, street corner, or, you know, if you're riding the subway, or you're just walking around the neighborhood, there's always something going on that that can be used as inspiration. Yeah, in your... You're a great example of that inspiration, too, because, uh, you know, you, you've got to focus harder than some to... Uh, to make things work, you know, and uh, maybe you have a different perspective on on uh, other things too. So you, you know, you're not afraid to kind of jump out there and and put yourself out there. And not many people can do that. So it's it's uh, very motivational to to for us to keep growing, evolving, and, and moving forward. Absolutely, yeah. And it's, <laughs> it's motivational for me too because you know now that I'm hearing that I have this 
reputation. I'm like, well, I got to keep working. I got to keep this up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, you got to keep up the good work, my friend, because you're you're doing well. So, um, well, Richard, is there is there anything that that we missed that you want to make sure you get out to the to the listeners, or um, you know, we just want to make sure we don't miss anything for you. Oh yeah, well, well, as soon as thing is completely finished, I will determine the date for the online premiere. And as soon as I have that date for you, I'll let you know, and mm-hmm. we can share it with everyone. And I hope that everybody who's listening to this gets a chance to watch Thing, and I hope that you have a fantastic time watching it. <laughs> yeah, definitely we will, and and we'll send you a you know an email with all of our thoughts and everything too. And and you know uh, we I added you to the group uh, today, so. You know, if you get a link or however you're going to do it, if you feel comfortable, feel free to to share, you know, in the group um, when that link comes out and people can watch it. Uh, we'll definitely um, we'll link that with our episode and stuff, too, when that comes out. So, oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, as soon as, soon as thing is finished, I know the day for the online premiere, you know, I'm, I'm not going to let anybody forget about it. Believe me, I'm going to be relentless in reminding everyone. Yeah, definitely. We're super excited, and we're excited for you. So, um, yeah, this was very inspirational. We appreciate you doing this with us. Well, well, thank you so much, Steve and Catherine. It's been great talking with you, and and thank you so much for having me on your show. Yeah, definitely. No, thank you for for doing this, and... uh, um, when we when we get it finished up, I'll email you a copy so you have one uh, before it, it comes out. But I think we're going to actually use it for uh, this coming Wednesday. So all of our episodes, oh, nice. yeah, they all come out Wednesday. So it'll be January 27th at uh, 7 in the morning central is when they, they come out. So, well, you're central oh, too. Cool. So, yeah, that'll work great. I am, yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Richard. Oh, nice. Very fair turnaround. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you bet. You're amazing, and we appreciate you. And uh, make sure you stay in touch with us as things move on, and, and we'll do the same. I will, absolutely. I'll keep you guys posted. And thank you so much, and uh, I hope you have a great rest of your night, and, and I hope everybody enjoyed listening to this show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Have a good evening, and good luck with the movie. Thank you. You too. You bet. Thanks, Richard. Bye. You're very welcome. Bye. Yep. Bye bye. Wow. What do you think? That is amazing. It is so great to see how someone can have, you know, have gone through these things in their youth or their adolescence growing up, take some of that and use it as an inspiration to be open and honest about going through it. As he said, it's like exercising his inner demons. Is that how he worded it? And suffering mm-hmm. brings his artistic side out. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, I don't know. That's what kept making me think about that is, is you know, he had to, to watch other people on how to be, air quote, normal. And uh, I think about all the times I've had people tell me that I'm just weird or, you know, how I approach <laughs> yeah, situations are something and, so I think it just goes to show you that it doesn't really matter, you know, what you're going through. Uh, people have a lot of adversities out there in the world. Mm-hmm. One, you never know what everyone else is going through. And two, you're not alone in your problems. You know, someone is going to have it worse. Someone is going to have it better. But your problems are your own. So you can always find someone or find some inspiration some way or another that, you know, it's telling you it's okay. That's that's the world, I think. The universe telling you it's okay. Mm-hmm. And like we've talked with our kids and we watched on TV today too is just because you're maybe that, you know, different or quote unquote weird child or you have, you know, something that makes your brain work a little differently, it doesn't mean that you have to conform to everybody else's ways. It's okay to, you know, you're born to stand out and you're born to inspire others. Mm-hmm. And he's definitely doing that. And so he has overcome a lot. And I'm really excited to see his film when it comes out. Yeah, I know you're not a huge horror film I'm not. fan, but <laughs> um, this is going to be something special. And uh, um, I'm excited for it to, to come out. And so we thank uh, Steve Joyner again for, for helping us hook up. So, hey, guess what? What? 
Oh, drinking out of his Positively Midwest podcast water bottle. That sucker's big. It's 32 ounces. <laughs> I wanted them to hear the sucking more. Oh, I use the straw, so I don't make that noise. I know, but I was going to transition into more of an explanation, but no, I drank too much because you kept talking while I was trying to slurp. <laughs> Sorry, this yes, is what ladies. happens when we don't you know, practice. Well, it's raw and organic. But ladies and gentlemen, yes, that was um, some sort of a suckling sound out of my 32-ounce stainless steel water bottle. And it does have the Positively Midwest podcast logo on it that Catherine herself designed that is also on my right forearm as a tattoo. And on your back because you're wearing your pre-order t-shirts that are out right now too yes so it uh we don't have um cash money to order all these shirts and different sizes and everything so we hooked up with a super awesome dude and uh he'll allow uh where we can do a pre-order so for people in the clothing world that means you give me your money first then i order exactly what you wanted so i can pay for it and bam you got your sweet positively midwest podcast t-shirt hat flex fit large or extra large Hoodie. With a papatio. Beanie. And then the water bottle and the tumblers are going to be on there forever. <laughs> but any of those, they're unisex, you know, small to 3XL. And um, we're going to, so we have to do the pre-order. We have to end it on the 31st. So if you listen to this after January 31st, 2021, which is totally cool, um, we'll probably have another round of either, you know, some of those if people like them. Or we'll uh, maybe do some designs and then we'll pop them on the group and uh, see uh, if you guys like, maybe they can vote on one, you know, or something like that. So, right. but my mission statement for those of you that haven't heard it 30, 100 times and uh, don't follow us for, on social media, which I doubt, but um, I am, we, I am a large proponent of therapy and I should clarify that I don't mean that this has to be mental therapy. Because I'd love nothing more than to get someone into, you know, drug rehab or alcohol rehab or whatever that means for you. Especially since we've interviewed um, Carrie Johnston with the Human Service Agency. We know we have got a connection there. We've got my counselor in our area, if you're from this area. We've got people in Min Minneapolis we can hook up in Sioux Falls now that we've done uh, We Face It Together organization. So, needless to say, if you live in uh, outside our, I know, but I just wanted to throw. If you live in Bozeman, Montana, like the Duttons, and you need <laughs> some therapy, we've been watching that Yellowstone show, and it's been it's pretty crazy. But no matter where you live, we love you, and we appreciate your support. And I'll and you reach out to us privately through a message, and we'll help find you. Um, if it's mental health, you know, we'll find you a therapist or a counselor, or if it's any kind of addiction, we'll, we'll try to help you with that. So, um, but that's what my mission is with, uh, the proceeds that we're getting off here. First and foremost, um, building kind of a pool, if you will, of this money and, uh, want to give it to the therapy, that therapy, and then to link up with some charities that we believe in, uh, and then, those, we might also do some special gear where it has their logo, our logo, something cool you can wear and um, help donate. And then last, but, you know, maybe least, but last, um, either if we need some new equipment or something, you know, we got a cool little gimbal so we can take some neat photos and do videos and have a tripod and um, try to get more connections through video. Uh, you know, we've got the mixer and Stuff like that. So, you know, equipment and a little bit of advertising on Facebook if we drop, you know, some new gear, uh, merch or something, you know, on there. Because um, it's the easiest way to reach our um, people that are from outside of our, our smaller community. Podcast listenership. Yeah, because there's a lot of cross-promoting with podcasts. and um, But, you know, we just want to get out there and help people out. So that's why that's very last on there. I'm sure at some point we'll have to deal with it more. But for sure, we want to help out with some therapy and some uh, different charities and groups like that. So long story short, thank you guys very much for all of your support. We've got some of that uh, merchandise gear out there. Um, flex fit hats, a beanie, a hoodie, and a couple colors of a t-shirt. My favorite color for clothing, black, as well as 
what Catherine coined as an army green on the website. Might be an olive green, might be a sagey green. We're not sure. It's a cool green, though, that's for sure. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, go check out the uh, the pictures online. So, anything else, my dear? www.positivelymidwest.com Slash online store. Backslash? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, the you follow us. It's all over. So. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for your support and for the orders that have already come in thus far. Yeah. Yeah, we sold a few water bottles right that first night and... And everything, so... A couple hoodies and shirts so far. Yeah, and I've been drinking a lot of water because of it. And we're helping the environment because we're not throwing plastic out into landfills. And the water just tastes a little bit better out of it. Make the waters just charged with positivity. (laughs) (laughs) Done? Uh, Yeah, hit me with your best shot, babe. Oh, gosh. Thank you all from the bottom of my hearts for listening to the Positively Midwest podcast. Our hope is to inspire, engage each other's thoughts, and leave you with some great advice. Be sure to join our Facebook group and follow us on Instagram at Positively Midwest Podcast. Make sure you like, comment, share, and screenshot our podcast with all of your cool friends. Every little bit helps. We are on most all major platforms, and you can stream it on our website at PositivelyMidwest.com. Thank you, and as always, please always stay positive. Positive.